Franklin County Board of County Commissioner nine session. Commissioner Jones, would you lead us in prayer and play it, sir? Yes, sir. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this day you've given us. Thank you for each and every one that's here today. God, pray that you'd be with us in our decision-making processes today. Help us to think clearly and understand, God, every situation, every circumstance we're looking at today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Next on the agenda will be the approval of the minutes. So moved. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Masson. Second. Second by Commissioner Burt. In it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Pass unanimous. Next on the agenda will be payment for the kind of bill. So moved. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Massa. Second. Second by Commissioner Perry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Pass unanimous. Public comments. Good morning, Commissioners. Gordon Hunter from Friends of the Appalachian Regional <coughs> Airport. Good Just want to report that we had a uh, a pancake breakfast fly-in at the airport this last Saturday. It was sponsored by our fixed base operator and supported by Friends of the Airport. And it was a good success. We had about 15 aircraft come in. Of course, most of them had to refuel, so that brings income to the county. Uh, there were about 50 people that attended the breakfast, and um, the uh, proceeds from that are gonna go to a, uh, uh, I think the sheriff's has a children's Christmas gift fund or something like that. So we raised over $300 for that fund. So that was, that was a good thing. And we hope to have uh, these events take place at least quarterly, maybe bi-monthly, bring in tourists. So I know we had some people come in for the, the seafood festival, and the airport's a great gateway for that. So that was, that was good, that was an important thing. We're also going to form a chapter of the Experimental Aircraft Association the benefits of that is they have a program called the Young Eagles Program, which gives free flights to, to youth. And we had that program going when we had an uh, air show a couple years ago. And if we form a local chapter, we'll have local pilots that will give uh, young, uh, young youth uh, an opportunity to get airplane rides and increase motivation. There's a real shortage of pilots throughout the country, both the military and the um, and the airlines are looking for pilots. And uh, so if we can enthuse in, in, in the use of the area to become involved in aviation, that's a real, real plus. So anyway, we're working on it. We're, we're trying to create some good vitality at the airport, and I think we're being successful. And I appreciate that. Thank you very much. May I ask you a question? Thank you. Um, yes, sir. What age, what age on that to start? I think, uh, if, if I recall, it's 12 through 18. Oh, okay. 12 through 18. And the last time we had uh, this kind of a th thing at our air show, we had 63 youths went up for flights. Okay, when that's, a good, that's a good number. Yeah. When you get it started, how about get with Mike and so he can put it in the paper. Good. So We're glad to do that. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. Go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Um, my name is Gary Darple, and I'm a resident of Alligator Point. And um, obviously, the road is a huge concern of everyone's. And I wanted to thank everybody for what they've done so far, working with everybody in our government. I know that can be a, a monumental task at some point. Um, I want to offer any help that we can be, not only as residents, but um, further any type of communication, either it be with uh, the legislature, uh, the senators, uh, the representatives, whatever we can do by email or reaching out to anyone as a resident to uh, make them aware of the situation there, as I know you all have already done. And Bert, thank you for your communication on that this morning. So that's basically all I have to say is thanks. Uh, we do appreciate it. Uh, it's not going unnoticed. And um, 
anything we can do as residents, please let us know. We'll be happy to step in and do anything we can do to help further this. Y'all can get a list, all you people over there. Yes, sir. And let's send it to every state representative and senate and everything and tell them to take over that rule. <laughs> was, I mean, that's for real. We, yeah, we, we've done that before, but uh, it's my third attempt in gathering people up to send mass emailing out to everyone, and we'll continue to do that. Yeah. And Mr. Chairman, just, uh, I, I concur with what you're saying and just the voice the same deal, that the more they hear that something has to be done on the residents down there, maybe, maybe a glacier will <coughs> move, uh, possibly. I don't know. The DOT is a little more resistant than even a glacier, but maybe something like that. Okay. <laughs> we we steady working on it. Oh, well, I know, and, and we will help all we can too. We we appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good morning. I wanted to also inject. Uh, we're going to, uh, we meaning uh, Jason Schof and his staff and I are going to have a formal meeting with Department of Transportation, with regard to considering uh, taking over the road. One thought was that perhaps we can uh, offer to exchange uh, one of their state roads without a bridge here in the county and we give them back that road. Now again, this is all theory, but we're going to make that approach and see what their criteria might be to consider. Okay. Public comments. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm Bruce Graham from East Point. I want to give you an update on uh, Civil Air Patrol. We've uh, found uh, several seniors to participate, so it looks like we'll be standing up our unit sometime in the March-April time frame of next year. We uh, currently have about uh, 12 cadets lined up, ages 12 to 18, uh, and we'll have four seniors, one of which coming down from Michigan who, who has already been a commanding officer and a pilot instructor, so shortly thereafter we'll be working with the wing to see about getting an aircraft uh, at the airport so we can start actually doing training and flying and uh, missions. In addition, I've had conversations with the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary uh, about them uh, starting up an aviation unit for the Coast Guard Auxiliary at the airport as well. And that will involve uh, those people who own aircraft actually getting training and using the aircraft to support the auxiliary in search and rescue missions um, and other activities. So the getting other units and, and opportunities involved at the airport looks like it's coming along. And uh, I think it would be very helpful both from a safety, security, uh, effort for the local community. I'll keep you all informed as this moves on. Last right. thing I wanted to mention is uh, the Veterans Day celebration on St. George Island. It's at uh, on the 11th day of the 11th month at 11 o'clock. And uh, I understand, uh, Mr. Jones, you may have an opportunity to participate. Um, and anyone else who can come and support the veterans' activities would be much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. I want on the CBD grant. I let wanna, me, um, I wanna let me get your name for that. Paul Sadner from East Point. I'm a fire victim over there. Mm -hmm. and I've been fighting Debbie Belcher ever since this fire, of trying to get a home over there. And every time she puts a different obstacle up in my uh, way where I tell me I got to do this, do that. I need somebody to step up and do something to her where uh, she get me approved. Okay. And well, uh, on that avenue, uh, I didn't think she said that I can't put the sheriff's trailer. And now she's telling me I got to get rid of the sheriff's trailer before they can even consider me qualifying. That's wrong. And she's got some kind of prejudice against me, and, I, and something needs to be done about it. Michael, get with him and um, get with Michael after the, sometime to beat Michael Maroon. He's our kind county of coordinator, and we'll uh, go from there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. But no more public comment. Next on the agenda will be. <coughs> Department Director's Report, Mr. Howard Neighbors, Superintendent of Public Works. Good morning, Commissioner. How y'all doing? Hey, Good morning. Uh, got a couple of items that we can continue on cutting grass and shouldering and road grading and stuff throughout the county. And uh, a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, we had a little <coughs> storm that come through. You know, everything very good. We had a few trees down. Uh, had Alligator Point had 688 foot of the road washed out out of the 1100 foot, so we got it back, you know, where people can't get in that their houses. So, okay. Mr. Chairman, 
Mm -hmm. uh, Howard, I just wanted to publicly thank you for the work your crew did. Okay. I was aware um, pre-storm how you had staged equipment and materials and supplies. Yes. And then I believe Mitch was there that Saturday morning, first light. Yes. And then later we, uh, we all assembled and watched that storm fade away. And uh, at the same time, I watched how you coordinated getting equipment in. And we even had an intra-agency borrowing of equipment where we borrowed the Waste Management Department's excavator. <coughs> And just as soon as the water receded, you were on top of it. And uh, it, so we had, I guess, Saturday evening at supper time, we had one lane. And then yeah. the next day, both lanes passable. And I yeah. just appreciate that coordination very much. And the closer you got your equipment, your material, the quicker you can get it done. So. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Appreciate yeah. that very much. And thank you. Let me just add on to that for two, two for comments. One, I, I know, uh, Commissioner Bolt, we talked earlier about relocating some of the sand piles on the side of uh, Alligator Drive to, to a less visible location, but this kind of storm is the example where you want to keep it as close to the, to the yes. action as possible. Sure. So yeah. I understand the Alligator Point community wants to look better, but uh, it just makes recovery mm -hmm. faster. So yep. until we have a permanent solution, we probably ought to leave it where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Number one. Number two, uh, and Pam and I both will say this later on in the day, but since Howard's here, we'll say it now, that storm is our expense. No FEMA money, there's no state money. Whatever Howard spent down there was coming out of his budget and out of the taxpayer's pocket. And you see, that's another emphasis for talking to the Department of Transportation about that term, what a good steward we are of that road. And this repetitive damage over damage, I think we've got so much history. This is another support. Well, yep. so. We'll work. You know. And we'll know, we know, if we even don't get a positive answer. Who we'll know? We did it. Uh, uh, right. I mean, anything's worth. Everything is worth an effort uh, to try and see if we can get some movement there. I will say, uh, and I just make this comment to you, everybody, that we put uh, twenty-five thousand dollars worth of asphalt down there after Commissioner Bolt got elected. It was now washed away. Uh, at this point, I don't, I don't recommend putting any more down there. No. We think we are creeping towards FEMA giving us approval. And I, don't, I so my recommendation right now is let's give another month or two to see if we can get some activity out of FEMA before we throw more asphalt down there and because now the road is so close to the ocean that yeah. even less than hurricane well a tropical storm mm -hmm. which is a minor tropical storm <coughs> right that way. so i just at this point i would say let's don't try that again mm -hmm. let's see if we can get the, the final solution yep you bet well i have a road department they professional down there because they've been there <laughs> that's, that's right amen, amen. last 20 years which it was about thirty-six thousand dollars to to what we did down there yeah. put the road back material labor Fuel, equipment. About 6000 you 30, said? 36000 30, 30, 30, yes, is what it cost to uh, restore the road following the... Yes, sir. That's counting the sand yeah. and all. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah men, yeah. equipment, material. Yeah, 36000 30, 30, 36, yeah. Wow. They got, the brick, they got the brick on down. Need a bridge. Need a bridge. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing going to fix it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. Well, I got it. Good. I got something for Howard while he's still here, if I can. Okay. Uh, so I believe it was the last meeting I brought up with Howard about seeing what we can do to, to have a five day a week uh, at his department, road department. Mr. Neighbors and I sat down and talked for quite a while. What I didn't understand, and I have no problem saying this, is how the state does with inmate labor. A lot of times we don't know for sure how many we're getting. We just have to go after them. And the, they might get there and they might give, we might send four guys and one of them get one guy, another one get three guys, another one get two. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't plan for what the state's going to give you because you don't know until you get there. So with that in mind, it, we are doing the best we can do with it being a four-day right. work week because I don't think it would be prudent for us to try to give up inmate labor. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure the board was aware of that conversation. Okay. Which, I, which I have one inmate, one crew have one inmate this morning. You take that one inmate, you either leave him. And when, once you get the inmates out, you can't just say, I got one crew, got two or three. Once you sign for that inmate, you're responsible for him. Yeah. You can't take them and put them on a different crew or go run equipment or do something like that. Once you get that one inmate, you have to keep him. You have to be over him. So you got to take him. If you don't, that, you won't get none. You won't get none. Right. Exactly right. right. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And he got to be on that. That's your assignment, right? Yes, sir. Once you sign for that inmate, you're responsible for that inmate. Okay. If, if that inmate goes to another crew or does something, whoever signed for that inmate is responsible <coughs> for it. So. Okay. That's good. Good info. Yeah. Anybody else got something for Mr. Howe? Yeah. Yeah, Mike. Michael's got something right here. Okay. <coughs> 
Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Good uh, morning. Uh, mix and mess that up. Okay, number two in my report. Uh, Commissioner Massey has received a request for the county to clear a portion of Mesa Road in Lighthouse Estates in the Lighthouse Estates Estates area that would allow Mesa Road to connect to Frank McCamey Way. In checking with Mark, your county planner, he states, and I quote, from 2004 until 2006, the county commission discussed taking over the roads in the Lighthouse Estates area west of Caravel. On August 1, 2006, the commission voted to accept the Lighthouse Point Estate roads as county roads. But at the very next meeting, the commission voted to abandon the same roads. On September 5, 2006, the commission voted again to accept some roads as county roads. This time, the motion explicitly named the roads the county was accepting, Paradise Road, Lighthouse Road, and West Road. They did not mention accepting Messer Road. Based on this information and the overgrowth on the reference portion of the road, it is obvious that the county has not been maintaining this road in any manner, and it is a private road. In order for the county to do any maintenance on this road, county acceptance of this road will have to be considered, along with Mr. Howard Neighbors' thoughts on having adequate equipment to clear that portion of Mesa Road. So, uh, and in talking to Commissioner Massey this morning, he's saying, no, Michael, some of that was actually paved. So this is where, okay, so I'm gonna do a little thing here. So this is where I think we're talking about the connection right there, roughly. It's gonna pop up here in a second. And I, I think Howard's saying there's some kind of cul-de-sac like right oh, there. Yeah. Be a vessel and Frank McCandy did in the got cold site. <clears throat> and I think that section of wood you see where you got the line, mm -hmm. if that road goes all the way through, which I wasn't sure, which I told William, uh, which is wood right, it had to be cleared out and the road built basically. <coughs> I wasn't sure if that was county or. So, uh, when, when we got it paved our way to Messer Road to where you got the crook right there. Yeah. We paved it. We've been maintaining it. We mow it. He wants to come off Frank McCamey and just push about 150 yards in there to get to their uh, two acres of land. About that way. About yeah, that they want to come off Frank McCamey because you that, can't about come that off. Far of, there? Yeah, about right in there. What is that? Oh, what you talking about? An asset? He don't have an asset to his house? No, sir. They, they've got property right there where that air is at. And Frank McCamey's is paved. We paved it. We paved Messer Road, and they stopped right there where the wetlands at. They couldn't go no further, but down on the back side of it, they could come in, <clears throat> push as far as they can to where she can get two or two acres. Is that is that part of private? I'm about to. This seems like a law. You What what the deal is? I just heard about this, the, probably like most of you did just a couple of minutes ago. I don't have an answer for you on the title question because I haven't looked at the title. Based on what I can remember from the 04, 05, and 06 time period, none of those roads were dedicated to the public whenever the subdivisions were platted. Uh, apparently the county went in and was maintaining some portion of the roads within Lighthouse Ridge Estates and Lighthouse Point Estates. Clearly, since the road is unopened, uh, by the developer, it's not been opened by the county, it's not been maintained by the county, it's probably private property, but I would need to, to, to ask the board to table this. Let me do a title search and come back to the board just to make sure whether or not it's you know public road that we can open up or if it's private property that we can't. I, mean, I just I don't know the answer to that question right now because I lack the information. Well, let me ask you a question. We got it paved all the way, Master Road's paved right there where the crook's at. They just couldn't go across the wetland. Who no, is we're, we're talking is about the, the wooded areas, what I'm referring Whoever to. Whoever built, who, back whenever they, the developer built that road, paved who, that road, right? No, the county, the county paved the county it. paved it. Mr. Bevan Putnam yeah. paved it when he had the money in there. He paved all them roads, Mr. Bevan did. And Mr. Road got paid when Mr. Bevan paved it. But the question that I'm hearing from the board is, is the question is not what do you do with the roads that are open and perhaps improved and maintained by the county. The question is, what about the wooded area that's never been opened? That, that's what I'm hearing the question to be. Um, clearly, uh, as, as you can see, the, the developer never opened it up, so the county's never maintained it. Uh, the county's never opened it or maintained it. Now, whether or not it's ever been dedicated to the county in some fashion that I'm not aware of, I mean, I, I would need to go check the public records. My memory is that, that it has not been dedicated to the public because I don't think any of those roads were. It was a private subdivision. 
Um, the developer built some of the road system in there. The county, over a period of time, went in, as Commissioner Massey said, and was doing work on the road and improving it. And ultimately, you got so many people in there, and the county had been maintaining it, that the county took over and accepted the road system as they had been maintaining it. Now we're talking about creating something new. So I just but, uh, I, I need more information. I'm, I'm asking the board if, if y'all are interested in, in me coming back with a definitive uh, set of facts and a recommendation. I would need you to table this and let me come back at the next meeting and provide you with additional information. Go I'll ahead. table it till you can find out because the road goes all the way through. I mean, they just stopped at the wetland right there, but at the time, I don't guess they could push through it. And sometime and during that time when the county went in and started paving and took it over, that's the reason it didn't get shoved all the way through. Every road over is paved except two. And the one coming off of 98 by the lighthouse, it ain't paved in one more, but it is county roads. Right. They just hadn't been paved yet. Yeah, I know the county was maintaining as dirt roads for quite some period of time, and then they went in and paved <laughs> other portions of the road in there. So I don't think we're, we're actually talking about the existing road network. I mean, what I'm hearing is, is that a dedicated uh, piece of land that has otherwise not been improved, is not presently eroding, can we use public resources to turn it into a road? That's the question that I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. And I just need to go back and check the public record to see if there's been a dedication. Um, um, as I sit here right now, based on you know experience and having been here at the time, I think it's probably private property and we can't do anything with it, but I need to look at the record. I mean, there's a reason we don't go by memory, we go by written records. Yeah. Let me ask a question. Yes, sir. When uh, they said in a lot like that, isn't it, ain't this the, the developer? Don't they pull the head on people a rope, or, or do the county pull the? Head? The developer un, under your subdivision ordinance, in order for a road to be taken over and accepted by the county as a public road, <coughs> the developer has to first construct the road and build it to county road standards, whether it's a dirt road or it's a paved road. And then once it is constructed to county standards, then we can accept it and maintain it at public expense. But no, it's not the county's responsibility to go in and build roads in an otherwise private subdivision. I mean, we just, we just don't do that. At least not anymore. I mean, back in the day, 50, 60 years ago, who knows what happened? But under your current subdivision ordinance, it has to be the road has to be constructed to county standards, and then once it is has been constructed to that standard, you can accept a dedication. So with that wetland, it's gonna have to go through DP and all that, right? Well, I just heard Commissioner Massey say there's actually a road on the ground that goes through there. So I need more right there information. where that crook's at, right there, the little horseshoe. Right. That's where it stops from Messer Road. On Frank McCamey Way, right there where the line's at, she owns two acres right there. She was just wanting it pushed through. You can't go all the way through, I don't think, kind of the wetland. But we have paved up to Messer Road to that crook right there, and we paved Frank McCamey Road. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, I, I would just re request that the board direct me to look into this and come back to the board with further information and I'll, I'll get with Commissioner Massey between now and the next meeting and the, the, I mean if, if there's a way to help I mean the county always wants to help I mean if we don't own it I tired. understand but we had paved up to that or that spot and stopped it never got pushed through and what they told me is when the county took it over that's when they they quit pushing the county took the roads over yeah, Commissioner, we took the roads over as they were built. I mean, That's there, correct. There, there are no plats out there. This is an unplatted subdivision. That was initially, most of the lots were five acre in size and therefore didn't need to have thicker roads. And then, then the owners, and I, I bet this is the case, the owner then initially bought a five acre track and then it has sold off one, two, or three acres and created these separate home sites. So that two acre parcel was never created, probably wasn't even there when we when we accepted these roads and now it's there. But it's, to me, it looks like it's essentially a driveway, to a private driveway to a two-acre parcel. I mean, that's what I think it is. But you know, well, most likely, as I said, based on you know my recollection of the time period from 04 to 06, uh, the the roads were private. The county went in at some point and began a, a a process of maintaining them. Eventually, took over the ownership of the roads. But we're talking now about building a new road, which is a completely different question. And under your subdivision ordinance, we just we don't build public roads with public resources on private property. But 
I would need to check the record just to confirm and make certain that, in fact, there's not been a dedication that, that I'm not aware of. But I most wanna, likely we're not going to be able to help. I want to I, – I'd like to help everybody, even though, but I want to be careful on this one go. We got a whole lot of That's correct. Private, for one, there's a bunch more waiting to get their turn, And too. we open this gag and nail. <laughs> That's correct. Such as Buck Street and East Point? Mm-hmm. Yep. And Patty Lane. Uh, 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 Just to name a few. So I'll second table in this. Uh, I got a motion on approval by Commissioner Masson and second by Commissioner Jones. We're going to table it until the lawyer gets the information to come back to us. Amen. Any more discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That passes unanimously. That's the only thing I have. Okay. Yeah, but we, we yeah. Oh, I, I just That's saying what the lady said. Yeah, they paved all the roads in there, not the dead end of it. And uh, got anything else, uh, Mr. Neighbor? Anybody got anything else for Mr. Neighbor? Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Thank y'all. Y'all have a good one. Mm hmm. Thank you. Next on the agenda be Mr. Fonda Davis, Solid Waste Director. Good morning. <coughs> good morning. Yeah. I have this one item on my report this morning. Uh, I have moved Melissa West to the vacant administrator assistant position that was previously held by Link Carroll. I would ask that she be given the same $1,500 increase that Link received when she was moved to that position from the scale house operator. Pledge of the boat. Wait. So didn't, don't we, um, and I do appreciate your insight because you're right there to know this, but didn't we have a conversation that we always keep salaries compartmentalized with the position uh, and, and we don't, I'm trying to think of the wording, we don't. And, advance somebody to a, a higher position. We don't give a higher salary when we advance folks to different positions. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of how we did that. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, well, Commissioner, this, this would up. be a promotion. It would be a promotion. So this is a, a, an actual lateral position, or is it she's actually elevating? Is that correct? It's a promotion. Okay. She's moving up. Okay. I see now. I just wanted to make sure I had that correct in my head. Yeah. Most yeah she was in the scale house. Now she's going in the office, I guess. Yes. With more responsibility. She, yeah, she was in the scale house. She's coming in the office with me. Yeah, administrator. Secretary. Okay. Like, Sir. Administrator. Secretary. Yes. Correct. Okay. That's a move up. So I did make a motion, Mr. Chairman. To okay. Approve. I got a motion on approval by Commissioner Jones. A second. Second by Commissioner Burt. All in favor? Uh, All right. All approved. That passed unanimously. I said, I know there's on uh, the agenda here the bid opening for the roll off truck, so I guess we're going to open that today. Y'all ready? Do we got a certain time to do that? We can do it now. Uh, you can open it now, uh, Mr. Chairman. There was no stated time for opening, just a deadline for submission. Okay. Uh, the package, my understanding, is was received in a timely fashion at the clerk's office yesterday afternoon. Okay. okay. Well, let's, let's do it. We have only one bid. It's from RDK, truck sales and rental. Uh, used roll-off truck. Okay. We can accept one bid and do it? That's entirely up to the boards. You, your policy on uh, bidding these out does not have a minimum number for the requirement of the bids. Um, certainly, I know in the past when we've received only one bid with other um, like federal requirements, state requirements, they require us to have a minimum of three, and you have been required to rebid. But your local bid policy, which governs this, is silent on the issue on the number of bids. It just says that you have to bid it. Open it up. Okay. You find while you're doing that, what is a roll-off truck? The, the roll-off is truck that carries boxes on the back. And in our case, it would be our compactor box. I see. It's the one that was on its last leg on the transfer station. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. 
That was that truck was given to us by waste management when they they left. It was by shot. It was it shot, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah, not roadworthy. Not actually physically leave the landfill because it wasn't. I see. Right. Yeah, we need some. Um, yeah, we got to do with it. Let's get that just a title of it. Showing. They was on the front. Maybe they just give them to them. Yeah. Free. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. Yeah. Okay. Free is free. They know we had a bad unit storm. price, which I'm going to read to be the uh, price they were selling, $39,900. Thirty nine band. You got it in your budget? Uh -huh. it, it, it is in the tipping fees budget. Okay. Um, we did anticipate on having to replace that turn uh, yeah. during our budget proceedings. So that was that was something that he does need for the landfill for the transfer station. All right, so moved. Got a motion approved by Commissioner Matthew. <coughs> Second. Second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Go get your roll off. Okay. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh a new truck would be like a hundred and twenty five thousand or better. We ain't gonna be able to do that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah we do. I'm okay. sure this truck is a lot better than what we have. Yeah. But it's, it, that'll get you, that'll keep you going. You said if I have that, that truck did it? Yes. One. Okay. All right. Anybody? What? That's it. Anybody got anything else for Mr. Dave? Keep up the good work. All right. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda be Miss Pam Bonilla, Emergency Management Director. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, I have two action items this morning. <coughs> uh, the first one is the approval and signing of the grant for planning and design of the new EOC in the amount of uh, two hundred thousand dollars. Page of the board. So moved. Second. Got a motion on approval by Commissioner Jones. Second by Commissioner Massey. All um, approved. Aye. Uh, All opposed. That passed you none. Let me just interject it for the record. Basically, this is a, this is our share of that one point eight million dollars. The state of Florida that gave DEM for nine counties to receive money for plan design. So we didn't know. We sort of expected it was going to be an equal share, but at, a couple months ago we weren't sure of that. Well, in fact, it is. So all nine counties got the same amount of money from the same effort. So, so where where, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Where, where does it go from here? I mean, do we? we you gonna bid out somebody to design and do all this stuff? I mean, how yes, sir. All it it has to it has to mm -hmm. go through the RFP process. Okay. In order to follow the guidelines. Okay. The state uh, guidelines. State and federal. Federal. Mm-hmm. How much money did they get? We get out of that. Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Okay. When are we gonna get it? Do you know? I'm surprised. It's a reimbursement. Okay. It's just like any other grant we get through the state. Yeah. We spend the money, we do a quarterly report, whatever we spent in that quarter, they send us a check for it. Okay. You know, uh, I'm surprised they gave it, uh, they usually give it to the big boy. Well, guess what? All the big boys always already got it, and we're oh. the only ones left. Oh, really? <laughs> I know it was something. <laughs> Those nine counties, the last nine counties, not necessarily the entire state of Florida, but certainly rural nine counties, okay. to get any help from the state. We, as Pam knows only too well, this is the <coughs> 15th year we've been trying to get money for a new EOC, and know. finally we get $200,000 for design. Now, clearly, 200000 isn't going to build your building. Right. So, you know, now the question is. Uh, where is the construction money coming from? It's possible the legislature is, is, has, already, has already thought through that. And it's possible that maybe this coming session they'll allocate money to DEM yeah. for construction. We don't know that. We, we have no idea. We have set aside some money in our consortium, a uh, million dollars. 
uh, that eventually become available. We're going to do the dredging first, and then we have a million dollars of construction. So, so the county has construction money if we don't get it somewhere else. Okay, but you know, they should because we the last one on the on the waterfront on the Absolutely. coast. We don't the have one. Mm -hmm. I believe we are the last coastal yes. county in the state of Florida to get it. Right. I mean that. That's, that's where they hit first. Yeah, and um, everybody else got their grants in September. I had to call and ask for hours. Really. Huh. Mr. Chairman, Go ahead. Uh, Pam, um, does this design component assume that we're going to put the building back where it currently is? I, I know we oftentimes when you design a building, you want to consider the topography of the land in which the building would be located. Are we just looking at uh, basically okay. a generic design right now and we put it somewhere later? No, sir. We have to decide because when you start your plans, you've got to have your site where the board's going to put it. Yeah. But first, we've got to get signatures and the state sign off on it, and then we, we can't do anything until that is actually executed. Where will you assume we put the new building? Oh. Where we, we, we tell it? Uh, say again? Where we tell it? <laughs> right? There are several options <laughs> that we will bring to the We'll board. just study so that. Okay. Ultimately, be y'all's decision Okay. <laughs> That's right. That made, was my question. We ain't making no about that. Yeah, but we did same thing. Okay. Okay. Well, I ain't got to be smart. We just ain't. Okay. Hey, Commissioner, I want to let you know, I, I, don't, I, I won't read it right now, but out of one of my reports, I went ahead and submitted yeah. a request for construction money as a legislative appropriation for the upcoming year. So, so, so we need to nail down where we're going to put it then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I just want to let you guys know, Pam okay. got the design money, so we're going to need to fight for the construction yeah. money. Okay? Like That's ASAP. Good. That's good. We ask everybody. I mean, they can't do them. If they help, they help. If they don't, yeah. we ask. Still got your plans. So once you have those plans, then any time that a funding source comes available, you can always apply for that. Mm -hmm. um, are they done voting? Did they vote? Okay. Uh, second item is... Signing of the retroactive LSE for uh, Tropical Storm Nesta on 10-18 of 2019 at 7.14 p.m. Again, we did not get declared, um, so again, that tabs on us, but just uh, a local state of emergency is something we, we asked the board to do to put in place. In case we were get uh, to get declared, uh, <coughs> then... Uh, we have a leg to stand on as far as FEMA saying that we knew that it was going to be worse than what we could handle. So moved. Good. Second. I got a motion approved by Commissioner Massa, second by Commissioner Jones. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I pass it down. That's it for me? Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, one more point. Yeah, just one minute. Um, Ms. Bonilla, I want to thank y'all for going out the other day to help the staff look for the lady? Well, uh, we heard yeah. this weekend we will be getting our CERT grant, so we will have it in hand coming hopefully in the um, next couple of months. Um, it was the first time that we've ever had to activate our CERT for a wide area search. Um, in that, we realized that mm, we need a refresher training, so we will be looking for an instructor to come in and do that, and we will open that up to anyone in the county that would like to participate in that. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. Show that the county is participating and looking out for our people. <coughs> Appreciate that. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I just wanted to emphasize, Mr. Chairman, what you did. Uh, Pam, uh, I just learned that you have a search and find component of the emergency management division. and. That was an education for me, and I'm glad to know that. Um, something else, too, that might amend and help you. Uh, I learned yesterday, at an Alzheimer's fundraiser, that there is a scent detection kit available now that allows uh, bloodhounds to find lost people. If you see something out there, say something or do something about people that are beginning to deteriorate in their overall faculties, there is a scent detection kit now where you can actually swab the body of an individual that you're concerned about might go away. And um, it's put into a sealed jar that you 
create that you actually have there as part of the kit. And that scent detection has a lifetime of 10 years. And a bloodhound can use that to go find somebody. And this was, of course, an example retrospectively of what we could have done with that lady. So the sheriff has that sample right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you need the, any more information, I'll be glad to help you with it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, they actually brought, the sheriff had a scent dog brought out. Yes, sir. Yeah, that may have been that dog in that group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to thank the sheriff's department, too. Uh, everybody, we want to thank everybody who involved and, and make sure they get the word we do. Michael. Okay. All right. Anybody got anything else for Ms. Bernaya? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pam. Good job. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Next on the agenda will be Mr. Eric Lovestrike. Right? Sent me an email. He wouldn't be here today. He's setting up for something, I think, up in Tallahassee, maybe. I'm not sure. That's so he's good. attending a meeting on behalf of IFAS. Okay. <coughs> Next on the agenda will be Miss Nikki Shaper. Yes, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm Good Nicole Cheppy with Weems. Give I've me your name for the record. Nicole Cheppy with Weems. Mm -hmm. I'm here to request an action on October 29th. The Weems Hospital Board approved the recommended removal of obsolete and broken equipment from the hospital's asset management list. We are seeking final approval from the Franklin County Board of County Commissioners to remove these identified items and donate them, um, select items to a 501c3 as previously uh, completed last month. Okay, y'all gonna, what you gonna sell them? Or no, sir, donation. Gonna donate them? Donation, okay. yes. Sir. 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 Okay, I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Parrish, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I pass it now. Thank you. Uh, just an update regarding the roof. The demolition was complete as of Sunday, and the temporary roof is on, and we're putting the permanent <coughs> roof on, and everything is uh, on target at the moment. Okay, you, you know what, when they'll be completed? What, what, they, what target date they got? For target date is still early December to move back into the hospital. That's good. Okay. We're on track, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. As for new construction, an, a note, uh, informational note, is the ACA uh, stand-up review, stage two, is now on November 18th. <laughs> so it's been moved up a little bit. As well as we have completed um, two project requests for grants, uh, one for 10000 and one for 8000 So hopefully we'll be awarded one of those as well. Okay. Good morning, Commission. Richard Lewis, EMS Director. Good morning. <clears throat> uh, we are looking at a State of Florida EMS grant, the annual grant that we get from the state. Uh, this year it is $843 and we're looking to use it for uh, education opportunities for our staff. And I'm asking for action to approve and authorize the chairman's signature for the resolution of this grant. Second. 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 Got a motion on the by Commissioner Parrish, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I pass unanimous. Thanks, sir. Uh, update on other EMS stuff. Uh, on October 28th, we moved into the station here in Apalachicola. So we now have a 24-hour ALS truck to respond in Appalach. And also in November, by November 18th, we're expecting the new ambulance to be in the county. Uh, hopefully a week or so after that, we'll have it in service, uh, responding in and will be located here in Appalach <coughs> for the crew. That'll be what kind that'll be? Uh, it'll be uh, uh, like the newer ambulances we have. It'll I'm be- ALS? Uh, yes, ALS. ALS. BLS, okay, ALS, okay. It'll, it'll be replacing the uh, old truck we have over here. Mm -hmm. Good. That's good. Yeah. And if you guys want to check out the station, feel free to stop by anytime. Okay. Uh, it's more you. convenient for y'all, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. All right. Chairman, uh, hey, folks, just a minute. Just come could. back up, please. Um, you know, in my district is Lanark Village, and last night there was a well-attended, I would say at least 30, 
to 40 people were at Lanark Village, and one of the issues was the decommissioning of the Lanark Village residents for EMT services. And uh, these folks did an excellent job in describing and explaining that situation to the people at Lanark Village. Um, the living environment is not up to standards, and uh, so we're going to be uh, temporarily uh, relocating uh, over there by Airport Road in Carabell as we plan and direct a new location permanent for the M S services. And I just appreciated operations and Louis there just taking taking charge and talking with the people there. Uh, one <coughs> resident came up and hugged Louie publicly right there last night, which was very special. <coughs> and uh, um, it, it, to me, it, it's just that opportunity to just educate the people, and it just meant a lot. And I appreciate both you guys. We just want to let you know that. We'll keep you posted on how things go there. Education is the best thing in the world. Eh? Let them know what we're doing. Yeah. Y'all keep up the good work. Next on the agenda be Mr. Billy Fontuna. Fontes. Fontes. Sorry about that. Wait. East Point <laughs> Water and Sewage District. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, Billy Fuentes with East Point Water and Sewer. Uh, I come before you uh, requesting a letter of support. The East Point Water and Sewer District has been working with the last few years with uh, Senator Montfort, Halsey Bashir before, and, and now Representative Shove, as well as a lobbyist to amend our charter. Our charter was supposed to have been amended in 1989 to reflect certain things that the state requires. Um, we are in that process now, but one of the things that we are trying to do is also expand our district boundaries. Currently, I'm going to hand this map, and you can see. Uh, the areas in pink are areas that we currently service that are considered the district boundaries. Uh, you you will see. Really, uh, I'm sorry. We have four. You have more. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't have five. I apologize. I'm um, you're going to see an area like. that's in red, which are areas that we already service, but are outside of our district boundaries. And so those areas are charged a surcharge on their water and sewer usage. Now. The areas of Ridge and Wilderness are literally split where those people who are obviously the fire victims and in our district are the highest concentration of poverty pay a higher surcharge than anyone else. Um, our goal is to reduce that surcharge to go away by bringing them into the district. The same thing with areas like CC Land Road. Uh, matter of fact, the uh, Franklin County Jail, uh, the, the landfill, the Humane Society, all those areas pay a surcharge and we service them. Um, in recent years, special districts have gotten into legal issues with areas outside of their district. There has been uh, some court cases about bringing service areas and since these are areas that we already service, we need to bring them into the district and make them part of our boundaries. Um, Representative Shove and Senator Monfort have both um, listen to us they've talked to our lobbyist but definitely would like a letter of support from the county stating that you know you're on board with us making this process now even with the letter of support it will still need to go to the legislature once the provision is in the legislature it has to go to a referendum so the people of the area that we are trying to bring in will ultimately vote to decide whether they want to be part of the district or not so it's a it's a L large process, but the main step is to make you aware of our situation and, and just kind of get support and, and an understanding of it. Let me ask you a question. Don't y'all pull to have a, do y'all got a target area there where you, for like a low income, where you get a help to get grants? Yeah, we, we were trying to, um, we were looking at a way to do uh, workforce housing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, up Highway 65, the district currently owns 45 acres. That was supposed to be eventually a spray field, but when we redesigned our plant, that kind of is no longer needed. So we have a surplus of land. Um, Commissioner Jones and several of my board members had talked about figuring out a way to use that to do workforce housing. We also thought that 
five, ap five acres of that land could be set aside for uh, an emergency um, facility. Uh, not necessarily a hospital, but something, you know, to help out. Uh, and also that is outside of the district. So one of the big issues we face is any time that we have to do financing, um, because we are a small independent district, you know, we usually have to go with a grant or a loan and we need to have uh, a match. So oftentimes getting financing for areas outside of the district can be a, a little tricky sometimes. But for the most part, our, our goal and desire is to bring these areas in get rid of that surcharge, which will allow us also to, you know, provide lower services or lower price services and not have to really affect those customers so much. And y'all can, y'all got the capacity to, to take yes, it Yes, sir, we do. Our plant is uh, 350,000 gallons per day and we're right around currently 100 and, 120,000 on high rain days, but typically it runs about 109, 111. So we're operating at, at less than probably 35%. And we recently completed, if you recall, with your assistance and with the CDBG grant project, we were able to put in new sewer infrastructure and build two new lift stations and a new water plant. And our two stations are operating at about 20% capacity. They have way, way more capacity than what we had before. Our new well, um, as a matter of fact, during the East Point fire, we pumped 1,500 gallons per minute for eight hours straight, feeding 100 fire trucks, and, and never missed a beat. So our, our system is, is well tested. We actually completed a secondary well in 2016. That one will also pump around uh, 1,000 gallons per minute in an emergency, and it will feed the system when we have to do maintenance on the larger well. Okay. Pledge of the boat. Second move. I got a motion on flow by Commissioner Master. Second. Second by Commissioner Jones. And just so the record is clear, with the motion is for letter, letter of support. Correct? Yes. That's sir. all you need from Yes, sir. That's all I need is a letter of support. Any hmm. more discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That passed now. Thank you. Good work. Take five.